TMJ arthroscopy and arthrosynthesis. TMJ arthroscopy. Most patients with articular disc displacements either improve spontaneously or can be managed efficiently with appropriate non-surgical therapy. Some patients, however, may become refractory to conservative treatment and they may require surgical intervention to relieve the troublesome TMJ symptoms. Failed non-surgical therapies accompanying persistently high levels of pain and dysfunction that interfere with the activities of daily living are the primary indications for surgical intervention. Traditionally, various forms of open joint procedures or arthrotomy were employed. More recently, TMJ arthroscopy has increased in popularity because it is less invasive than open surgery. It is associated with few complications and it requires a shorter hospital stay. The American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons outlined the indications for surgical or operative arthroscopy. Operative arthroscopy was indicated for selected joint conditions that constituted a disability for the patient, that were refractory to medical treatment, and that required internal structural modifications. There are four subclassifications of TMJ arthropathy that are amenable to treatment with arthroscopic surgery. The first one is hypomobility, secondary to anteriorly displaced disc without, with or without reduction, it is adhesions. Hypermobility, degenerative joint disease like osteoarthritis and synovitis. Operative arthroscopy, lysis of the adhesions and joint lavage are the most commonly performed TMJ arthroscopic surgical procedures to relieve painful hypermobility so the surgical the surgical arthroscopy involves the lysis of the adhesions and joint lavage these two are the most commonly performed tmj arthroscopic surgical procedures to relieve painful hypermobility the objective of these techniques are to eliminate restrictions on the disc and lateral capsule to wash out microscopic debris which results from the breakdown of the articular surfaces, to irrigate the joint of enzymes and prostaglandins, and to stimulate the normal lubricating properties of the synovial membrane. The presence of fibrous adhesions in the superior joint space limits normal translatory functions of the disc condyle complex. Although the pathogenesis of adhesions remain unclear, it is suspected that a macro or micro traumatic episode causes hemorrhage. In the presence of limited joint mobility, the blood will clot and it forms organ and it forms and organizes into a fibrous adhesion. Generally, a blunt trocar or blunt probe is utilized in a swelling in a sweeping fashion between the disc and the temporal bone to accomplish the lysis of adhesions. Arthrosynthesis. With the recent introduction of arthrosynthesis, joint lavage has become the simplest form of TMJ surgical intervention. So, arthrosynthesis is commonly defined as a lavage of the joint and it is traditionally accomplished without viewing the joint space. It may be completed under local anesthesia as an office procedure with or without the addition with the with or without uh, addition of sedation and its primary purpose is to clear the joint of tissue debris blood and pain mediators that are believed to be byproducts of intra-articular inflammation although arthrosynthesis is being used for the treatment of a variety of tmj disorders such as acute capsulitis or traumatic synovitis published data on long-term outcomes are available only for its use in the treatment of closed log. Nitzan has noted the results obtained at three centers in Japan, Israel and United States to determine the efficacy of arthrosynthesis in the management of closed log. Lactated ringer solution or normal saline was injected into the upper joint space to increase the intra-articular pressure and lavage the joint. 
The results in 68 patients presenting with symptoms of severe closed lock included a maximal mouth opening increase from an average of 25.29 mm to 43.6 mm. So there was an increase in the interincisal distance. Overall, arthrocentesis was successful in 94.1% patients. The follow-up times ranged from 2 to 36 months with no reports of relapse. Because the success rates with arthrocentesis are similar to those of arthroscopic lysis or lavage, Nitzan believes that a major part of the success of surgical arthroscopy in the treatment of severe closed lock is attributable to the lavage rather than to the surgical instrumentation. Sanders, however, maintains that in cases of chronic closed lock, intracapsular lysis using probes between the disc and fossa is necessary to release anterior to release the superior compartment adhesions.